So you want to buy a new saddle, but you're feeling somewhat confused by all of the different options that are out there. Well, fear not, my cycling friends, because in this video, I'm going to discuss all of the different aspects and characteristics that you should look out for and why. Right, I've drafted in help to discuss this pain in the ass subject, or pitter for short. So joining me, we've got Jake from Precise Performance, who has helped fix many people's mm. sore bottoms. Lots of sore bottoms. Yeah. Jake, thanks for joining <laughs> no us. No worries at all. So saddles are an area where we've got a near endless selection of choice. Yeah. And it can all seem pretty confusing, even for serious bike nerds like myself and Ollie. Well, maybe even you included. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But the first thing that I want to discuss, right, is for perhaps people who are starting out and don't really know what to look for when they're trying to choose a saddle. And perhaps I've seen something that looks a little bit like this and think, oh, that's a great idea. This big chunky boy is perfect for what I need. Yeah, and in reality, it's, it's probably not. You no? know, it's, it's good if you're for your 15 minute ride into town to get your groceries. Yeah. Um, but, but also, I'm not saying that we need to go for this super fine and fancy saddle here. That thing is incredible. It is incredible. Um, there's loads and loads of saddle options in the middle, and yeah. there's definitely something out there for everyone. We just need to try and break it down and find the right one for everyone. Fantastic. Now then, even though these two saddles are clearly very different, their basic shape is kind of similar. We've got this like triangular design, would yep. you say? So I guess first and most obvious question, why are saddles shaped the way they are? They're shaped the way they are just to support this, this ischial tuberosities or the sit bones we know and, and the actual general pelvic shape as, as we know it as well. Yeah. People's geometries are very different in terms of size, width, shapes, but they all work in the same way in some aspects that they all want to rotate forward onto a saddle yeah. and be connected in, in, a, in a supportive way. Now, saddles have got lots of different levels of pattern as well, haven't they? Absolutely. So, why is it that we've got some that are thicker and some that maybe got no pattern? Sometimes it's personal preference. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's what the manufacturer believes is correct for that rider. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it is, for this example, if you're literally just commuting into town for, for groceries and, or if you're, you know, looking to wear your, your Lycra shorts and get your padded shorts onto, onto this sort of uh, style of saddle. Okay, fair, like that. Um, now, even though the, well, I've already mentioned these are very different saddles, in general terms, almost all saddles have got a similar layout. So on the top, yep. we've got the cover, it's yep. the part that you sit on. It offers a bit of grip for the shorts. And then underneath the top cover, you've got the foam or the gel padding. Yep. And then underneath on the base, if we flip this over, the base is what gives the saddle its shape and its support. They can be made from plastic, nylon, carbon fibre, lots of different options out there. And then underneath as well, we have the rails. Now these could be made from steel, titanium, or carbon fiber in this instance, which you should point out are overlized and aren't gonna fit on every bike. No, and that is sometimes a problem I see with, with people coming in, they've put their nice, expensive, carbon railed saddle onto an oval, onto a circular clamp, not an oval yeah. clamp. <laughs> um, and you know, it's damaged the rail and caused the saddle to actually sit at an angle, which is actually causing some of their problems to their discomfort. So why exactly is a saddle the shape that it is? Um, do you know what? What? I'm gonna show you. Fantastic. In most basic sense, we want to support the issue of tuberosity, which we commonly known as the sit bone. Also, this sort of triangular shape to the pelvis here is also an area that needs to be supported by the saddle. Everybody's bone structure is going to be different, males, females, and that is why we have different whip saddles to accommodate for this. So with that in mind, what aspect is it from our saddles that mostly affects the comfort that we get when we're riding on the bike? So the shape of the saddle is, is mostly important. However, it's also how we interact with it as a rider, whether we're riding, you know, in an aggressive position, whether we're a bit more relaxed, all of that needs to be accounted for when we're looking at the fit of the saddle and how we actually want to connect to that saddle. Say, someone that is perhaps riding in a more upright, say a slightly more relaxed position, now I'm assuming that's gonna mean that they put more weight onto the saddle and they're gonna to have to choose a slightly different option, is that right? Yes and no, sometimes it can be, sometimes it might not. This is where we can solve a lot of problems when someone comes from riding in a very sort of low down, aggressive position, which actually doesn't suit their body. Uh -huh. They actually have quite a lot of pressure on the saddle then, which is causing them a lot of problems, a lot of pain, uh, saddle sores, all the stuff you don't want. We then put them into more relaxed position. In theory, yes, there's more pressure 
on the saddle, but it's maybe more widespread. Okay. Which then actually takes away the, the pain and discomfort they're feeling, improves their riding ability because they're not in pain anymore. And then, yeah, problem solved, basically. Now, in relation to, say, Celitalia saddles, what we're using as our examples mm -hmm. today, they um, give different shapes and sizes, different labels. Yeah. So the method that Celitalia use is S and L, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got a narrow option, which is the S, and yeah. the L, which is the wider or larger option. Yeah, yeah. And then when you go through their range, they also have a one, two, and a three. Yeah. Now that's in relation to, in essence, the position that you're riding on on the bike. Yeah. But the reason they're labeled that way is to do with the angle that your pelvis sits. Is that yeah, right? That's right, yeah. So the, the Cellar Italia sort of guide in, in terms of fitting their saddles is to try and work out the, the shape of the saddle is like you say numbered one, two, three to yep. work out how much they can rotate onto the onto the saddle and actually cause them to have effectively a more comfortable position. Okay? okay. And this is great if you haven't got any input from a professional bike fitter or yeah. you know a knowledgeable person who understands a saddle as such or how you how you connect to a saddle. But it, yeah, it's a good starting point. Okay, fair enough. Now before we dive any further into this and have more information, I want to know a bit of information from you guys at home because I want to have a poll on this, right? So I want to know, have you ever suffered from a saddle sore before? Simply yes or no. Click on the link in the description down below. Head to the GCN app, vote on our poll. However, no pictures though. No. Oh, weird, no, no. Wouldn't it? That would be a bit weird. But if you want to send a picture, just send them to Ollie. Yeah, I think direct you... to Ollie. Ollie's yeah. number is 077. Something that is clear to see here. Your saddle that you're holding has got no cutout. Yep. The saddle I'm holding has. So can you sort of run us through some of the reasons why some saddles have a cutout yep. and how one saddle might slightly better suit a different type of person? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, more preferred, I guess, from, from what I'm trying to put across to people is having a cutout saddle is, is better. It takes away a lot of pressure from soft tissue. Um, can, can solve a lot of discomfort, a lot of numbness that a lot of people will find. Um, that in itself doesn't work for everyone though. Yeah. Okay. Um, you sometimes find, like on your saddle there, that the ridges of the cutout can be a bit too pressurized for some, yeah. some people, so it can cause cause a bit of pain. Um, and then having no cutout is, is, is better for those people. I'd say there's probably a higher percentage of people that would prefer the cutout. It would alleviate that pressure that I've just mentioned. Yeah. Um, and just in general hold their pelvis better on the bike because they don't feel like they need to shift from left to right yeah. or change their pedal stroke or change their ankle position to try and take away pressure from certain areas of the, okay. of the pelvis. Now, this saddle that I'm holding is ever so slightly shorter yeah. than perhaps lots of different saddles that are out there, but it's still not one of the shortest saddles available on the market. Now, why is it that we're seeing the length of saddles change and is there a type of rider or cycler that lend itself to using that shorter nose saddle. Yeah, so the, the method behind it is that it allows people to, to rotate forward a little, that little bit easier, get them lower down, get into that aggressive position. So more aerodynamic? More like aerodynamic. Time trialing maybe? Yeah, time yeah. trialing if you're looking for that sort of, if, well, even if you're not looking for it, but your bike position sort of, kind of like forces you into that way because that's the way the comfort is. Uh, this That sort of type of saddle may be better for you. Again, there's a lot of saddle on there which doesn't really want you to, you don't need to sit on effectively. So rem by removing that, it stops people from sitting there. Yeah. But the main benefit is to, like I say, rotate people forward more, uh, reduce some pressure from uh, certain areas which we don't really want pressure in, yeah. um, which, is, which is the key thing really. That kind of so. makes a lot of sense what you've just said there. The different shapes are effectively to account for the position that you're riding in to make sure you're not putting pressure on areas yeah. that it shouldn't be. How would you assess that the material the base is made from affects the performance someone gets from it? So let me give an example. Say, perhaps a lower end or slightly more affordable saddle, yeah. the, the nylon base is going to be a little bit more flexible yeah. than perhaps a carbon fibre one. Yeah. So is that something you find that you can use that to refine and tune the saddle? Yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, if, if the base is going to flex too much, um, what we might find is that the body is an effect, or your, if you look at it the way that your pelvis is actually dropping by three or four mil every time you do a pedal stroke because the base is flexing. Yeah. 
that can be eradicated by putting a solid base, which might be more of a carbon yeah. sort of material, which will then make it more uh, more stable for the pelvis and actually improves your pedaling and dynamics. Okay, no, that makes sense. I think I understand that. But also looking at your saddle in terms of perhaps a bike upgrade, yeah. if you were going to keep to exactly the same measurements, shape, sizes, and all the different stuff, but perhaps you looked for a more expensive model of that yeah, saddle. Yeah. It's got carbon fiber base, rails. It's also an effective way of saving quite a bit of weight. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I just want to double share. <laughs> <laughs> so what I found with my experience is moving to a carbon fiber rail yep. helps to save weight, but I would say doesn't have any impact on the performance that you get in terms of comfort. Would yeah, you agree with that? I would agree with that, yeah. Okay. I think that... <sighs> Sometimes there's a little bit of flex, but mostly it's, that's actually going to be in the general base. So the rail itself generally doesn't make too much of a, a massive contributing factor. I, to, I would to comfort. To, to comfort, okay. I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, right, well, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Right, another question for you, one I'm always asked in the comments section, yeah. is do saddles wear out and is there a time frame when you should look to replace them? Uh, absolutely, saddle 100% wear out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, almost a bit like a, it's a moving part in a way because it's you know, you're sitting on it quite a lot and there's a lot of weight going through it sometimes. Yeah. The time scale is hard to say because it all depends on how much mileage you put through. So it's not really a, okay. Yeah, a point. And some saddles can wear out quicker than others. Maybe even on someone's style of riding. You know, some people that really bob up and down. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, definitely worth keeping an eye on that, making sure the actual, again, come back to the base, the base hasn't got too flexy. Um, the wings are, they can sometimes become uneven. Yeah. So one side can drop lower than the other. Um, yeah, so definitely. So those sort of aspects that you could check when you're doing just some basic bike maintenance. You could look to check that the base has got no cracks yeah. in, make sure you can't see that the saddle looks wonky, that yeah. kind of thing? Yes, yeah, so if you look at it from behind, you can, if you look at it from like, from the back wheel. Yeah, yeah, from the back wheel ones, you can sometimes see one of the wings is dropped down a little bit oh. lower than the other side. Yeah. Um, and then just checking basically underneath. If you've got a bit of mud there, it's worth just trying to wash that away just to see if there's any cracks or anything like that, because it can happen over time. Okay, that makes sense. Now, a lot of the stuff we've gone through is going to help guide people towards, or just be better informed to when trying to yeah. find a saddle for them. But there are lots of different online selectors and tools out there that are really going to help guide people through suggesting yep. some saddles that might be suitable for them and their style of riding. You simply input some information yep. and then the computer sort of program and algorithm goes, hey, why don't you try this type of saddle? Yep. Which is a really good starting point for someone that maybe doesn't have the option to come and see someone like yourself yep. or go to their local bike shop. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good starting point. But what I'm interested in is how you and your bike fitting experience and expertise is used into trying to make the same assessment, but by looking at somebody. Yeah. Because I feel like it's hard to replace that human interaction. When I'm sort of conducting a bike fit, I'll, I want to make sure I can understand the whole of the body. So we can understand the limitations in flexibility, the strength, the imbalances that the, the rider might possess uh, just, just naturally from their career or from previous sports. We then look at them on the bike and see how they're actually interacting to that saddle. Because sometimes the saddle can be correct, like I say, but the habit is to sit too far forward. I always do that. Yeah, I've seen you, I've seen <laughs> you ride. Uh, yeah. Um, which then causes the saddle to be uncomfortable in the actual general bike position to be, to be incorrect. By doing that, I can look at it from behind, I can feel two points in their back just to see how they're sat, whether they're swaying from left to right. And it can be other changes we make, so it's like supporting their feet, for example, supporting their hands on the handlebars, which can then help square them up on the saddle. And then we can assess if the saddle is actually correct or not properly. It kind of goes in a few stages, really. Okay, no, that's really interesting. Now, I mean, there's almost near endless amount of stuff we could talk through here, but I feel yeah. like that's a really good starting point and has shared a lot of knowledge and information with people. So, well, I want to say, Jake, thanks very much for coming, Pleasure. helping us out, talking through saddles. Hope everyone at home has found this video helpful and informative. And why not let us know in the comments section down below, perhaps, if you're struggling with an issue with your saddle or if you just want to let us know what's your favourite saddle. Yeah. Um, if you like videos like this and want to see more of them, subscribe to GCN Tech, hit the bell icon. And hey, if everyone shouts up loud enough, maybe we'll convince Jake to come back. Right, see you later.